souls. And he is not scared to pop up and witness. He is not scared to argue and contend for the faith. Glory to God. And I'm excited to see what the Lord will do through him. So, Brother Ellen, let me grab your mic and I'm going to release you to preach to us the word of the Lord. Praise God. Give it up to Jesus. It's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in him. It's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in him. It's all in Jesus. Give it up to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Give it up to Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, we're going to go to a portion of scripture. Thank you. I want to go to a portion of scripture. Acts 22, 12 through 14. And when, Ani and when Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto him and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. In the same hour I looked upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee. Thou shouldest know this, and his will, know his will, and see that just one shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. The title today is going to be Just One. Pastor, if you would do it on us and pray. Come on, saints, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We thank you tonight for your mercy, Lord God, and for your kindness toward us, Lord God. And I pray right now, Lord God, that your anointing will rest upon Brother Elliot right now. Help him, Father, to preach upon the unction of the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Let demons be subject to the word that he preaches here tonight, Lord God. Let it bring revelation. Let it bring understanding, Lord God. Let it bring deliverance, Lord God. Oh, God, let this atmosphere be conducive, Lord God, for a mighty move of your spirit, Lord God. We place him into your hands right now, praying, oh, God, that you get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on and shout amen to the Lord. I want to give thanks to Pastor and the First Family and the wonderful, you know, the wonderful, you know, the, the, the chosen, you know, the royal priesthood, you know, the blood blood, you know. Yeah, we give it up to Jesus. Give it up to Jesus. All right. Let's go. Let's go to the first verse seven of the opening scripture because you know we have to get in context with paul i don't know if y'all know who paul is that was, a, that was a dangerous man that was a dangerous man we it was a dangerous man now he endangering the gospel you know so we're gonna go to that right there um 14 scriptures up you know what i mean well seven scriptures up um and i fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me saw saw why persecute why persecutest thou me and i answered who doubt lord and he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, who thou persecutest. We all going to have that moment where we have that I am Jesus moment. I know everybody in here had that I am Jesus moment where he had that revelation. So, you know, Paul was a, Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisee. He was killing all of the people who was away. He was a one God believer, a Jew who knew the scripture, had to pretty much hear a, Bi had to pretty much hear a Bible study from Stephen the martyr. Then he had to watch him die while, while his clothes were at his feet. You know? Imagine that. What, and um, later getting a revelation of God himself. He had a revelation of God himself. From this, point, from this portion of scripture right here. Right here, right? So. Giving up on a, um, you know. So don't give up on a Bible study. My point right here is don't give up on a Bible study. You're teaching a Bible study, people. You know, and you're thinking, they're just sitting in the corner watching you. They're watching you, or they're, you're teaching them, and they're just not trying to hear what you're trying to say. But, you know, you're just sitting there like, man, they're going to get it. They're going to get it. Man, what was me? I'm going to tell you. I had a friend, when I first got saved, when I first got baptized in this wonderful church, when I tell you I came home and I went to one of my friends, he was a Trinitarian friend, he tried to witness to me years ago, I was excited. I was like, oh, man, do you know? I was baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, Pfft. You believe in that stuff? You believe in speaking in tongues and, and all that stuff? Yeah, I'm so, he tore me down. So I sat there and I, you know, he was like, you need discernment. You need to talk to the Lord and pray about that. I don't see, that don't, mm, that don't seem right. That don't sit with me. So I went home. I did that same exact thing. 
you know, bold. I was like, you know what, Lord? I believe what I believe is true. <laughs> but I need you to tell me. I need you to show me. Don't come on. Y'all, y'all know what it is. How it feel like you want to know the truth. So I was like, hey, Lord, I need you to show me. Please show me. The next day, I'm going to, I'm going to Sunday school. Pa- um, Pastor Ramon now, he, he's over there teaching Sunday school, giving me all the answers that I prayed for the night before. Pastor's over there preaching this. All the answers that I was looking for was right here. Search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. All right? Search the scriptures. God will give a a revelation. It's a revelation. All right? So, now to my second point. To my second point. We're going to, you know, go quickly. The Bible says so. The Bible said that there was one God. There was one God. There was no other God like him. You know? You know, we we all know the foundation. You know? Shema Yisrael, Anai Elohinu, Adonai Kad. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. There's only one Lord. Come on, even Jesus had to say, they asked him when the commandment, they said, what? He was like, what's the first commandment? He said, you know it. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. If Jesus is sitting there saying that there's one Lord, he's talking about himself. You know, so you have to know. In the Gospel of John, he says he's the word made flesh. He loved us so much, he dwelt among us. Like, look, I feel your pain. I feel your heart. I feel you. I can understand. You can't say I don't understand you. I I slept. I ate. I did everything you did. And I died for you. That's how much I loved you. You know, so we have to understand that. And that, you know, he was God manifested in the flesh. It's scripture in terms of scripture. You know, Isaiah 9, 6, Matthew 28, 19, Ephesians 4, 5. All sound like titles of one God to be Jesus Christ. Jehovah has become our salvation. The root and the offspring of David. Only God, that's how. Did you know there is 91 scriptures of one God? Show me in your Bible where there's one scripture of any trinity. Of any trinity. There's none. There's none. 91 scriptures. You understand this? Let me tell you. And in Isaiah, in Isaiah 9, 6, I saw titles of, 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 of a Godhead. That sounds like a title of a guy had to me. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Oh, that sound like that sound like a God had to me. One God. Let me tell you. Look, and I'm praying. I'm praying that we all get that revelation like Paul. But let me tell you this. My last point with this. Let me tell you this. The devil knows there's one God. But guess what? That's good news. Because they tremble. They tremble at the name of Jesus. But did you know the devil hates us when God believes us? He does not like us. Right, right. We could walk to a place that he knows. And let me tell you, I got, I got at my job at Publix. I'm sitting there begging for, you know, this one lady. And she could just feel my spirit because I'm blessing everybody. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. You know, I'm not ashamed of my, you know, my apostolic walk. And she just, she looked at me and had the audacity to tell me, oh, I don't believe in that. I'm pagan. I'm a witch. I pray to, what you know what she said? I pray to three gods. You know, so tell me how a trinity does not sound like pagan to me. So we have to walk in oneness. It's not just oneness in God, but oneness in the body. Because he is the head and we are the body. Let us be one as he is one. Let me tell you, that is what it is. That is what it is. And these people, these Trinitarian people need to understand this. Because let me tell you what, in Revelation 28, 22 and 18, it says... Oh, you already know. Oh, let's go there. Let's go there. In Revelation 22, 18. Let's go. At the end, right? So. Let me there. Doo, doo, doo. My fault. I had it. I just, you yeah, know. There we go. So, 2018, 22, 18 through 19. Hmm. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life. And out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. These people don't preach that around here. None of these people preach that. They don't preach the fullness of this book. This book will give you the revelation, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. I'm here to encourage the body of Christ. There was only one God, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one Father of all that is in you all, through you all. There's one God, and his name is Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's all give it up for Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is above all, through all, and in you all, and in this church, and in South Tampa, and in Tampa Bay, right here, and his name is? Praise God. Hey Amen. You, 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 you can't go wrong reminding us there's one God. Amen, amen. I'm reading a book right now. You can be seated. I'm reading a book right now written by Jonathan Kahn called Return of the Gods. He's, he's, it's, a, it's, it's a good book, and he's, and he's telling us about how the, the, how the gods that were cast out at the beginning of the church, the pagan and paganism that was defeated by Christianity, has returned, and that there is an unholy trinity of them. Ooh, glory to God. And all of the sin you see released in the world is a result of those gods coming back with seven more wicked than they were. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the people, I, I, I talk about it just a little bit here, but I saw a video of soldiers in Israel on October 7th, and they were all shouting, Adonai, Ichad. They were military soldiers. They were standing there. Y'all don't know what that means. They were shouting, Adonai, Ichad, Adonai, Ichad, Adonai, Elohinu, Adonai, Ichad. And they're soldiers. They got rifles. You want to know what that is? Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Shim here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Adonai, Elohinu, Adonai, Ichad. The Lord our God is one. Though the armies of Israel is shouting it. As they were avenging the deaths that happened on October 7th, they, I, felt, I felt a connection with them as they were shouting that. Adonai, I started shouting with them. Adonai, Ikad, Adonai is Lord. Ikad is one. One Lord, one as they get ready to go to battle. One Lord as they got AR 15s on their shoulder. One Lord, come on, as they got their boots on. One Lord, glory to God. There is one Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You got me fired up, brother. I'm a, I'm a, let, me, let me move on. Hallelujah, Jesus. We are one God. The devil has always been against the one God people. You don't mind if you worship more than one, because if you worship more than one, you're not worshiping the true God. Amen. Amen. All right. This time I'm going to bring up another man of God. Praise God. This guy right here has a burden for the lost. He is a soul winner for the Lord, and he is one of the hardest working individuals that I know. He's one of them guys that if you call him to come and help you, he's going to get the job done. And if you want to slack off, he's going to look at you like, I ain't got all day, bro. You need to. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. A amen. But his heart, his heart is gold. And I can see the Lord moving in his life, and I'm so excited that God has placed him here to uh, give me the privilege of helping him and his family. So at this time, Brother Ben Perry, come on and preach to us what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, God. All right. Um, firstly, I'm going to thank Pastor, man. This is, this is a man of God, and, uh, you know, I see the full armor of God when I look at him. I don't see the suit and tie and the shoes. I don't see none of that. I see, I see a man after God's own heart, and uh, I see a church that is with their pastor and behind them. I see some mighty men and women of God. David had his mighty men and women. Mighty men, but we got our mighty men and women here in uh, South Tampa, and uh we're small, but we got heart. David was kind of small, but he killed a giant. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, thank you. Uh, also, Sister Jasmine, your family. You guys are very godly examples of, of what it looks like to live this Christian walk. And um, your marriage, your, your parenting, um, and your ministry, is, it's, it's admirable. And we, we appreciate you guys. Amen. Um, Brother Elliot, man, I like your zeal, man. I, I appreciate it. I need it. I, I, I say that before today. You know, I'm like, man, I want, I want some zeal like Brother Elliot. But uh, 
you know, I got to get, I got, you know, I got some work to do in the prayer room, but Amen. Wednesday nights, praise God. Um, want to honor uh, the help everyone around me knew I needed before I did, and that's uh, my wife, Sister Michelle. Um, she's, she's a great wife and, uh, you know, mother to our children. She's the best, and she's a hard worker, and if y'all think I work hard, man, she, she, she a hard taskmaster. <laughs> So, but we get stuff done, though. I'll say that, you know. Like, you know, not a, not a lot of fluff. You get, get her done. <laughs> oh, man. But I'm thankful uh, to my dad and my mom. Um, they, they, they came in off the streets, and, um, you know, God, God called them and uh, saved them. And um, in this apostolic faith, this one God message, and, uh, you know, I'm thankful for it. I don't... My, my devotion is not divided. You know, when I, when I need help, I call on the name of Jesus. And Amen. I don't have to ask, who, who do I pray to? Who do I call on right now? I call on the name of the Lord. And like Brother Reggie sings it, man. He is a strong tower. We, I, like, I, I like how you sing that. Amen. Um, but we'll go to the scripture, please. Um, the scripture is Job chapter 33, verse 23 and 24. This is... Elihu, and he's uh, giving some feedback to Job in, uh, in, after Job's uh, calamities. Um, but the word of God says, But if an angel from heaven appears, a special messenger to intercede for a person and declare that he is upright, he will be gracious and say, Rescue him from the grave, for I have found a ransom for his life. The title uh, tonight will be Ransom. Ransom. Amen. Pastor, if you could pray for us, sir. Come on, saints, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you today, Lord God, for the word we've already heard, Lord God. But I pray right now for Brother Ben, Lord God. I pray let your anointing begin to rest upon him right now, Lord God. Let the dove begin to ascend upon him, Lord Jesus, and, and take his mouth and use it, Lord God. Take his lips, Lord God, and make it an oracle of truth right now, Lord God. Let your hand be upon him, Lord God, to preach and to teach your word, Lord God, under the unction and conviction of the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Let demons be subject unto his word, Lord Lord God, uh, give him power, Lord, over all the power of the enemy, Lord God, uh, as we seek to do your will here tonight, Lord God. Uh, we count it done and surrender him over to you, Lord, now and this service. Uh, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, somebody shout amen to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. If we got some children that's paying attention tonight, I need your help, all right? I want you to look on the screen. Okay, I see one back there. I want you to look on the screen, and I want you to look at what, what kind of toy is that? Teddy bear, teddy bear. Anybody else? Any? Teddy bear? All right. I agree. It's a teddy bear. Well, what's going on with the teddy bear? What's going on with his outfit? Can you tell me? He lost a button. Is that it? All right. I agree. That teddy bear is missing a button. That teddy bear is no other than corduroy. All right. Corduroy. He's missing a button. Corduroy's at the, he, he's, he's, he's right there at the, uh, at the mall, um, and he gets passed by and passed over quite a bit because he's missing a button, right? He looks like he's a little bit undone, and, you know, they just, they just keep passing over Corduroy, right? But Corduroy, he wants to go home with somebody. He wants to be picked. He wants to, he wants to be part of, you know, of, of a family when, when you get uh, into the whole book. So there's a... There's a little girl who comes through. Her name is Lisa. She's with her mom, and she looks at Corduroy, and she's fond of Corduroy, and she says, Mommy, I want Corduroy. You know, look at this bear. She said, Well, not today, dear. We spent too much already. And plus, he's missing a button to his shoulder strap. So Corduroy, he hears the conversation. Lisa and her mom, they leave. Um, so Corduroy, he starts out on a journey. He's in this, in this mall, a shopping mall. Um, looks like the book looks like it's probably in like the 50s. It's kind of retro. Um, and Corduroy's looking, and um, he goes on an excursion. He goes up an escalator, and he called it a mountain. He said, I always wanted to go up a mountain, and, uh, but it's an escalator. But over here, you can see he uh, found his way to the mattresses, and he sees that button, and he wants to get a hold of that button and put it on his shoulder strap, right? So maybe Lisa or somebody like her might come and purchase him. So, nonetheless, that, that button's on there tight, and Corduroy, 
he pops off of the bed and he goes tumbling. The, the watchman hears and he comes up and comes and investigates. Um, he finds Corduroy hiding in the bed and takes him back down and puts him on the shelf. Well, the next day, the Lisa returns and she comes and she finds Corduroy and She had her money, and she saved up her money, and she went, and she, uh, you know, she got all her change out of her piggy bank, and she went and found corduroy, and she purchased them, all right? So she's got her, she's got her bear, and uh, he's got his friend, and so she takes him home, and uh, she, she, uh, she, she sits there, he gets in the house, he's like, oh, this is, this looks like home, you know? He's like, doesn't look like a mansion, like all the beds and all the couches. He said, this looks like home. And so she sits there, and she gets out a, a needle and a, and a button, and she begins to thread that on the corduroy. And uh, on his, she said, I like you how you are, but you'll be more comfortable with this shoulder strap. And so she tightens up the shoulder strap, and corduroy said, you must be a friend. I've always wanted a friend, and they give a big hug. Well, Eloise, listen, we read this book to her all the time, and uh, praise God. Um, my brothers in here, uh, my family, you guys, you guys kind of, you guys know me and uh, appreciate you guys and uh, sticking with me and you know loving me and believing in me and I, I got, we got to walking in today and I look down and you might not notice but I'm missing a button. All right, the button's missing, and I'm talking about um, you know, uh, I'm talking about a God who saw value in a thing that didn't see value in itself, all right? We're searching, and we're searching, and we're searching, but, but God, he found us. I um, want to go into some, some scriptures the best I can, and, uh, you know, I'll probably do a little limping and a little, little working uh, through here, but go with me, and I'll we'll be mindful of time. So a ransom, a ransom defined is a sum of money or other payment. I'm talking about another payment demanded or paid for the release of a prisoner. All right. Amen. So we, I got three points for your consideration tonight. Um, the first one is going to be the value of a life. All right. In order to pay a ransom for a life, there first has to be a value placed on that life. And we all want to talk about God's relationship with humanity a little bit right here. And uh, in the scripture, this is Luke chapter 3, verse 38 in the NLT. This is... Just some genealogy and um, pretty significant in my opinion. It means a lot to a lot to all of us. Kenan was the son of Enosh. Enosh was the son of Seth. Seth was the son of Adam. Adam was the son of God. This Adam would walk with the Lord God in the cool of the day. Adam was made in the image of God. Adam was the only man on earth. Adam didn't have a wife yet. It was it was him and God. It was God and his son, and uh, he, was, he was his delight. You know? And so, literally, Adam was the man. He was the only man. And Adam received authority and dominion from God. He named and labeled the creatures God had created. And David, King David would say it like this in a song. What is man that, thou, that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Amen. And we, we go a little further in uh, the New Testament in John chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. Jesus says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Amen. Amen, amen. It's a, it's, it's a friendship, it's a relationship with some contingencies, you know, much like a marriage. There's contingencies there. Thank God for it. Um, also, I want to go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 19. For you know that, this is the NLT, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors, and it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Second point will be the high cost of sin. Amen. 
Genesis chapter 2, verse 17 in the NKJV. But of the tree of knowledge and of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. There, 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 there's, a, there's a sin equals death. There's, that's the parallel. That's the companion. That's, that's the neighbor. That's inseparable. Sin is going to result in death. Roman, let's move to Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all have sinned. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. Amen. Sin, amen. And then uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. We're talking about Moses and we're talking about the Hebrew, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Faith, just mentions everybody who ever did anything great for God, and it's, it's really amazing to be there. We, we call it the Hall of Faith. You know, it's like the Hall of Fame, but the Hall of Faith. Hall of Faith is obviously significantly better than any Hall of Fame, because d- them trophies are going to burn. Amen. But by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Amen. The pleasure of sin is seasonal, seasonal, and inevitably the end is death. Also Colossians 3 and 5. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. And and verse down to verse eight. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Amen. Amen. We're uh, around here. We're in the pursuit of holiness, happiness. That's a feeling. Holiness. We'll see God. So we gotta we gotta go against this uh, this sinful nature every day because it's waiting at the door. It's waiting at the door. But we have dominion restored. Amen. A third uh, point for your consideration is the life is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. For the life of the body is in its blood. I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given exchange for a life that makes purification possible. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we, we see, keep moving forward to John chapter 19, verse 30. And... Uh, We'll jump down to 34. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Verse 34. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Amen. Go to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12. Got it in the NLT right here. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for the rebels. Praise God. So it was, it was, it was, the, it was our inequity that got us removed from the garden. It was our sin. And it was our rebellion. And so if it was rebellion that got us taken out of the garden disobeying the word of God, it's going to be by faith and obedience to the word of God that we're going to be brought back in, all right? And so we are, we we, we adhere to the word of God, no matter what tradition says, no matter what, I I don't, it doesn't matter the size of church, the following, the money, the the, the buku dollars, it don't matter. We follow the word of God, and I'm, I'm so thankful to be here. I'm thankful that the blood and the water, they meet together in Acts 2.38, all right, when Peter stood up amongst, the, amongst the, the other disciples and in front of everybody, and he instructed them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. There's an inheritance to this. Amen. So That's... Uh, that's it for me, uh, church. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for letting me uh, try to minister. Man, I love you guys. Um, bless you guys. Appreciate everybody. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Wow. Wow. I got like five sermons out of that. He don't even know it. Happiness is a feeling. Holiness is God. Them, them trophies going to burn up, but the Hall of Faith, y'all ain't preaching. I could preach for like four or five hours on <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want you to know tonight you just heard the full doctrine in Jesus' name. We heard the oneness of God. We heard the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We know about the ransom power of the blood, and Brother Ben told us how we apply it. He said if rebellion got us kicked out, then obedience can the only thing can bring us in is Y'all ain't preaching. Y'all ain't preaching. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. All right. We're going to close out. I'm going to close out uh, here today with just, just something I want to bring to your attention. So if you could stand with me. Um, and while you're standing, clap your hands for these two men of God. And there are more coming in Jesus' name. Praise God. There are more coming in Jesus' name. And I'm just excited for them. And I want to encourage you to encourage them in their, in their walk with God and in their, in their various ministries that God is doing through their lives. And uh, obeying the calling of God on your life is not an easy thing to do. Uh, but it is worth it. Amen. It is worth it. So keep them lifted up in prayer. Uh, keep them lifted up in your, in, your, in your hearts and in your minds. And let's see what God will do. And if God is calling you, call me. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Numbers 19. I know scripture team, uh, media scripture team. Media guys, I didn't give this to you. I say media guys like I got a whole bunch of them. Y'all know who the media team is. <laughs> Amen. Um, uh, praise God. Numbers 19, I'm just going to start reading from verse 1, uh, and I'll, I'll go all the way down um, to verse 10. This, so this, this may be the, one of the only scriptures I read tonight, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Numbers 19, verse 1 to 10. If you got it, say amen. 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 This is what it reads. Um, I'm in the King James Version. The Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying... This is the ordinance of the law, which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. And you shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp. And one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin, her flesh, and her blood. With her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet, cast it into the midst of the burning heifer. A, a burning of the heifer, excuse me. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water. And afterwards he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean to the even. And he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water and bathe his flesh in water and shall be unclean until the even. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without the camp in a clean place. And it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation. It is a purification for sin. He that ga gather the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. And it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger which sojourneth among them for a statute for forever. Uh, there are many more commandments that he gave regarding this, uh, this red heifer um, and the ashes of it. But it would take a pretty long time to explain it all. So I won't read the scripture. We'll just go forth. Um, and I want to reveal something that has happened very recently. Um, and with, in re regards to this red heifer. And so if I have a title for this, it would be the Sabbath of the red heifer. Wow. Sabbath of the red heifer. Amen. You can be seated. Um, so you might ask yourself, why in the world is pastor talking about a red heifer here today? Um, it seems like this scripture seems like one of those like, obscure scriptures in the law that you neither pay attention to nor does it apply today. Uh, but really, that red heifer 
is a foreshadowing of a details of how Jesus would die. Uh, because it had to be without spot or without blemish. And it had to be a particular age. And it could not be killed inside the camp. They had to take it outside the camp. Uh, speaking that Jesus would not die inside the walls of Jerusalem. They would take him out onto a hill called Golgotha. And they would crucify him there. Uh, but more specifically, this red heifer was a purification for the priesthood. Um, if you, anybody remember the tabernacle, we're talking about it on, on uh, Wednesday nights. Raise your hand if you remember the tabernacle. Praise God. Uh, the whole purpose of the tabernacle. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. The whole purpose of the tabernacle was so that God could dwell among them. And the only people that could minister in the tabernacle were the priesthood. Those were the sons of Aaron specifically. They were called to be priests. And so if you brought a sacrifice, it was a priest that had to offer that sacrifice for you. You couldn't offer it of yourself. Saul got in trouble when he did that. Even though he was king, he was not a priest. He offered a sacrifice out of place, and Samuel had to rebuke him for that. Um, you had to be specifically of the, of the tribe of Levi and from the sons of Aaron in order to be a priest. Well, priests are men too. And so priests need to be cleansed just as much as everybody else needs to be cleansed. I know they had special robes. I know they had special garments. I know they had special ephods and linen and all of that, but they were still just as sinful. Amen. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so you never get to a place where you don't need the mercy of God and you don't need the grace of God and you don't need the forgiveness of God. And you never get to a place where you don't need the blood that Brother Ben talked about. And we never get to a place where we can get where we can get all high minded and mighty and all of that. We still need mercy. We still need grace. And so there was no exception for them in the Old Testament. Those priests had to be cleansed before they could minister anything in the tabernacle. They had to be cleansed. They had to wash in this particular way. And so the way that God designed for this to happen was the red heifer. Uh, this was a, a, a red cow, essentially, uh, and a female with some, other, uh, with some other requirements. And it had to be without spot or blemish, uh, meaning that it couldn't, have, it couldn't have a large amount of white or black hairs on it. Uh, these are very rare cows. They ju you just don't come across a red heifer all the time. Um, it, is, it is very unique. It's, it is very, very rare. And so if you find one that meets the qualification of this sacrifice, you found a very rare thing. And, and so before they could minister in the tabernacle, God would command them to take this cow outside and uh, crucify it um, and lay it up and burn it and use its ashes, mix the ashes with the water. And the water would purify the priesthood so they could then offer sacrifices for everybody else. So before any priest could minister, they had to have this sacrifice of the red heifer. Uh, well, <clears throat> and when you know it, um, just this past uh, year, in, in the end of October, in the end of 2023, in October 7th, uh, there was an attack. In New Life, we, we were actually in prayer. We were in all-night prayer. And you, you remember we got the news that there was a terrorist attack that had been launched on Jerusalem um, on the last day of their great feast, the Feast of Tabernacles. And it was done by an organization called Hamas. Uh, Hamas uh, and the Palestinian Authority there in Gaza, they came across the borders of Israel and massacred thousands of people, um, took a lot of hostages, kidnapped, raped, and pillaged. Um, it was a gruesome attack. It, we've preached about it. I did a sermon related to it about what it means as far as the end time uh, and how it is prophesied that that would happen in the Bible. Um, go back and listen to that if you're confused about what I'm talking about today. But we covered it. I covered it in detail. And it was, it, it is a, it was a sign that we are getting closer to the end uh, because Israel was now taking up arms and they vowed to obliterate. And they're still fighting that war uh, today. That war is not done, even though it's left the news cycle. Um, it's just not the main headline of news right now. I believe it will be very soon. And I'll say you'll understand why here in just a second. Well, um, this year, very recently, uh, one of the uh, Hamas uh, army's most spokesmen spoke out about the reason for that attack. And here's what he said. I'm summarizing this. You can go listen to it yourself. He's speaking Arabic, I believe, and they translate it over into English for you. But here's, here is what he had to say about it. He said the reason why they launched that attack is because Israel escalated the tensions against the Muslims and against the Palestinians. And his, his 
His justification for saying this was that they brought in red heifers. The, um, from the scripture we just read about. And he called it, they call this, 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 this war the Al-Aqsa War. Excuse me, the Al-Aqsa Flood. And Al-Aqsa is the mosque that sits on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So where the Temple of God is supposed to be, the Muslims put a mosque right there. And it's one of their three most holy sites. I think Mecca is another one. I forget where the other one is. But it is a very contentious place. You can't just walk up there and pray. They are threatening your life if you do that. You can't just walk up there and call on the name of Jesus. Jews can't just walk up there and pray. They can only pray at one particular place, the Western Wall. It is a very contended for place because they believe it's the place where their mosque is supposed to sit. But the Jews believe that's where the temple is supposed to be. Same place where Jesus said, not one stone shall lay up on another because they miss the timing of their visitation. That temple is going to be destroyed. And they're preparing to build the third temple. I want you to know this. They're mostly ready. We've been talking about the tabernacle. They have a lot of those things already found or crafted. Table, showbread, altar of incense, all the garments, all the, all the tackles and all the, everything that they need, all the furniture, all the utensils, they got it ready. The only thing they don't have is, is peace and the authority to build that temple. But they want to do it. And they're getting ready to do it. And so this Hamas leader, he saw that last year that they had imported five red heifers from Texas. Some Israel sympathizing farmers from Texas sent them, had been saving these red heifers. Y'all hear? They, people in America had been saving these red heifers in order to donate them to Israel. And the rabbis agreed. And they imported. Now, the Muslims saw that move as a threat to their mosque and to their people. He said, that's why they launched the attack on October 7th. He called it a religious myth of the red heifer. This Muslim Hamas authority did. And he understood something that goes right over our head. Here's what I'll go, I'll, I'll read for you in the scripture. Daniel chapter number 9. It's the prophecy concerning the end time. Verse number 24. Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. I'll wait for you guys to put it up on the screen. And media team, there's a picture in the media folder shared media folder called Massive Altar. I put it there. If you could load that up and get ready to put it on the screen. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in, and bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, until Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So he's saying there's going to be 69 weeks until Messiah. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous time. And after three score and two weeks, Messiah shall Messiah be cut off. So he's talking about Jesus. The angel is giving Daniel the timing of Jesus' death. That's what's happening right there. This is why it shouldn't have been a, a, it shouldn't have been a wonder that who Jesus would come this time. They had the timing already. Amen. And, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come uh, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So the angel already told him they're going to destroy the city and they're going to destroy the temple. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And the end of the war a desolate are, desolations are determined. Look at this. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That is the last seven years. 
of this dispensation. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. This is talking about the sacrifices in the temple. So what he's telling you is that that temple that they have, the building, the second one, that one's going to be destroyed. But they're going to begin to build another one. And during this last set of seven, during the first three and a half years, they'll start offering sacrifices again. Ah, we're getting it. That last seven years, the first three and a half years of that, they're going to offer sacrifices until the, look at this, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to seek. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Now, let's go to what Jesus said in Matthew 24 concerning the end times, because Jesus mentions this. Matthew 24, verse 15. He's talking to his disciples now. I'll, I'll wait for you guys to pull it up. There you go. You guys are quick. Praise God. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor sh ever shall be. So what Daniel and Jesus is really telling us is the last seven years is going to be marked by when the Jews are allowed to rebuild their temple and they begin to offer sacrifices again. And in the middle of that seven years, the Antichrist is going to come in the temple of God and commit the abomination of desolation. Basically make himself God and cause all their sacrifices to stop. And at that point, that's the last three and a half years. This is what got the leaders of Hamas all riled up because they are ready to build the third temple. They have everything that they need. But before they can offer sacrifices, the priests have to be cleansed. And wouldn't you know it, just last year they imported these five red heifers. And they have a plan to sacrifice these heifers this Easter. Pull up that picture if you got it. It's on the media folder. Did you guys find it? Give me a thumbs up if you found it. Okay, good. That is a picture of the altar that is built in Israel. The headline reads, Massive altar for red heifer sacrifice constructed in Israel. They are planning to offer these sacrifices of these red heifers this Easter, this Passover. And they have to do it on the Sabbath before the Passover. That's why this message is titled the Sabbath of the red heifer. That's, they just built that, y'all. That's, that's a lot. And they built it according to the Bible because, you know, the, you can't have steps on the altar. They have, there has to be a huge ramp. When's that happening? This Passover. This is a Jewish leap year, so it could be April 2024. It could be next week. And so Hamas is not happy. Whew. Hello, somebody. Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming. We've been preaching it. He's coming. Because once they go and offer up those red, they believe that the sacrifice of those red heifers and ashes will be able to cleanse all the Israeli Jews to get them ready to offer sacrifices in the temple that they're getting ready to build. Mm, glory to God. Which is the last seven years. Boom. Now, if you're pre-tribulation, which we are, that means that we believe that God will catch us up before those last seven years begin. Yeah, look at my daughter's doing, doing the math. Wait a minute. So, 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 so that means 
that that means this year, next year. Tell my kids all the time, you better get right or you're going to get left. This is why I believe there's an urgency in the Holy Ghost to repent. There's an urgency. Combine that with this fact. The Bible says the moon shall be turned to blood and the sun shall be turned to darkness before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now, I don't want to be a doomsdayer, but we missed the blood moon last week um, on the 20th. And there's a complete solar eclipse happening in the beginning of April. <laughs> Lord Jesus. And knew not until the flood came and took them away. And two were in the field and one was taken. And two were in the bed, the one taken. And the other left. Two grinding at the meal, the one taken. And the other left. Church, I'm here to tell you these things are happening right before our eyes. We are right there. We are right there. We are right there. We're right there. We're right there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, praise God. This has happened a bit. Now, the news media has not reported this at all. And I wouldn't uh, either if I was them because people aren't going to understand this. This world is anti-Christ everything. Why did they kill thousands of people over some cows? See, that's why you shouldn't even mess with religion right there. They're just crazy. Meanwhile, they're transitioning themselves, calling us crazy. (laughs) I know what gender I am. Lord, have mercy. (laughs) Amen. They probably going to cancel me for that one. I I don't care. I tell people I I care not. I care not. And so I I wanted to bring uh, that to your uh, your attention today um, in order to, to convict you, really. And and to prepare you, because th- there's an Old Testament scripture that talks about the wise men of Issachar that knew the time. And, and I believe God has raised up wise men in the church that can know and understand the time and be a warning to us about the times to come. We are very, very close to the coming of the Lord. And the way Jesus crafted it is that you won't really feel anything is different naturally. Signs will be happening and you will be missing them. He rebuked the Pharisees because he said, look, you can discern the weather, but you can't tell the timing of your visitation. You can tell when it's going to rain, but you don't know when your Messiah is standing right here in front of your face. And if we're not careful, we can be caught with the same type of attitude. So caught up in our lives, so caught up in our own situations and all this we think we got going on is so important. And we're crying and bickering about and the Lord's like, I'm around the corner. And I'm taking who's ready, not who has good intentions. I'm taking who's ready. Glory God. I'm taking those that are awake. Paul said, yeah, that they come as a thief in the night. He said, but you are not in darkness that that day should overtake you. Glory to God. As a thief, glory to God. That means we're not supposed to be in complete darkness. I don't know when it's going to happen. I can't tell you when it's going to happen. But as travail upon the woman with the child, I can say that baby's coming any day now. Uh, the water broke. It's coming any time now. Them contractions are coming. It's coming any time now. They're getting closer together. It's about to I don't know when. I don't know the hour. I don't know the day. But definitely the season is ready and God is ready to return. Praise God. Now, uh, I spoke about this on a podcast with Pastor, uh, Pastor Lorenzo, Pastor Warren Carrollwood. Uh, and he asked me what, what, what I suggested do. First of all, pray for Jerusalem and Israel. Because when they all, now the enemy already killed a thousand of them because they, they didn't even like the fact that they brought the heifers in. What you think is going to happen when they sacrifice them? There's a sand ballot spirit released. I'll go to here. Nehemiah chapter number four. Mm. Ooh, glory God. Nehemiah was a man that had a burden to go back and build the wall. 
And going, anytime you're going to build something for God, you have opposition. And Sanballat were the people that were already in the land and weren't allowed to help them. And so they came against the people of God, um, being that they were Samaritans. And this is what they said in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 1. But it came to pass when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall. And he was wroth. He's mad. And he took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Look at this. Will they sacrifice? Hello. Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heap and rubbish which are burned? Praise God. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down this stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. This is what the Jews are facing. People are, that's, that, that's not a political thing. It's not about, you know, all those poor Hamas and Palestines. You know, the world is doing a very good job of turning a world against Israel. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Don't you, don't you turn against Israel. Don't you let your hearts say nothing about their character. Let God deal with that. But he told us to pray for them. Jesus said there's only one sheepfold. And he's got another flock out there, which is the Gentiles, but there still ain't nothing but one sheepfold, and there ain't nothing but one shepherd of all the sheep. And we are brothers with our, with, with our brothers the Jews, so we don't need to have that mentality, well, you know, I don't agree with this, and they're wicked, and this, and that, and the four. It might be all of that, but you need to pray for them. Because they got enough enemies that don't want them to sacrifice. They don't want them to rebuild the temple. They don't want to be in the land. And frankly, they don't want them to exist. Hello? So pray for Jerusalem. Pray for Israel. Pray for peace. Pray for their protection. Pray that they get a revelation of God. Pray that they come to know Jesus. Because they will. They will look on him whom they pierced. Jesus is going to reveal himself to them. They're still waiting on their Messiah to come. And I just want to be there to see a look on their faces when they see it was the same Jesus we've been worshiping the whole time. The root and the offspring of David. The great I am. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's the same one. The same one that you killed 2,000 years ago is here to save you and to redeem you. Praise God. Pray for them to get that revelation. They already believe one God. They're chanting it right now. Adonai, Echad. Adonai, Echad. The soldiers chanting, Adonai. I'm telling you, I was so heartwarmed and fired up when I heard, seen that video. The soldiers sitting there military. Adonai, Echad. I'm like, ah, that's us. You put an organ behind it, it'll sound like they was hooping. <laughs> Adonai, Ikan, Adonai, Ikan. And I'm so happy because we're the only church that's shouting that. The Baptist not shouting one Lord. Presbyterian's not shouting one Lord. The Jews know it. What's wrong with us? We need to get a revelation that there's one God. And he's coming back. He's coming back. And he's not coming like a little lamb, praise God. He's coming with fire in his eyes. He's coming with his vesture and white robe dipped with blood. With a name written on his side that is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's coming with a sword in his mouth. He's coming with judgment in his hand. He's coming with righteousness. He's coming in power. He's coming in demonstration. He's coming to say the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and guess who's going to be behind him I'm going to be with him you're going to be with him you're going to be with him you're going to be with him saying hallelujah to the lamb glory to the lamb who was slain and honor and power and glory be to the lamb forever hallelujah 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 oh glory oh glory oh glory glory <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, God. So pray for Israel, pray for Jerusalem. 
because they're going to face some very tough battles coming up. And all of it really centers around this Passover season. Because when they offer them sacrifices, it's not going to be pretty. I believe my brother here <laughs> kind of gave us a, a, something to pray about the other day. And I think he was 100% right. We need to pray for Jerusalem because, you know, enemy are plotting against them. Second of all, uh, we need to make sure we got oil. Amen. Parable of the wise, ver I mean, the, the foolish versions. There were 10 of them. Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. And the five foolish carried no oil with them. They carried no oil. And they have the oil. And then, the, and then at midnight, there was a call. The bridegroom cometh. Make ready and go out to meet him. And the ones that had oil, all of them trimmed their lamps. <laughs> but the one, five of them looked at the lamps, wanted no oil in that lamp. And it's midnight. You need that oil to get to see. You need that light to strike up that lamp. And then, so they went to the five wise and said, look, let us borrow some of your own. But they're wise. They said, no, 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 no. You need to go get it for yourself. You need to go and buy for yourself. Oh, see, you, you can't go to heaven based off of my prayer, con prayer life. You, you can't go to glory based off of my consecration and, and my sacrifice. Praise God. Hallelujah. I laid out in this altar to get this oil. I fasted and was afflicted in my flesh to maintain this oil. I repented and got rid of stuff out of my life to keep this oil burning. I removed the ashes to keep this fire burning. Glory to God. I paid the sacrifice. I made sure I had enough. I, 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 I didn't skip the Bible study. Huh? I didn't skip the devote. Come on, somebody. Huh? I got up when I didn't want to get up. Get up. Huh? I came to church when I didn't feel like coming to church. Huh? I did what the pastor said. Huh? I did what the preacher said. Huh? And because of that, I've got the oil. Huh? And if you want some oil, huh? you're going to have to get it for yourself. Huh? Go out there and buy. Huh? Find it where they sell it. Huh? Find where you can go and get it. Huh? Find an altar and go and get it for yourself. Glory God, glory God. <laughs> Gotta keep that oil coming. <laughs> keep that oil flowing. <laughs> so I'm telling you, pretty soon there's gonna come a call. Huh? An angel's gonna be sitting there with a trumpet, praise God, huh? and waiting on the direction of the Lord. Huh? And the Bible says when that angel blows that trumpet, praise God. Huh? Oh! hallelujah he's gonna have a sound uh, and that trumpet of a sound is gonna be calling us uh. glory to everybody that don't believe you need to speak in tongues uh, and make a sound uh. it was a sound that put the holy ghost in us uh, and it's gonna be a sound that calls us up to heaven uh. so you keep your quiet church uh. i'll take the church where there's some trumpet you keep your quiet church. Uh, I'll take the church where there's a trumpet. Uh, when Moses preached uh, and got the law, there was a sound of a trumpet. Uh, when they consecrated the symbol, there was a sound of a trumpet. Uh, when the walls of Jericho came down, there was a trumpet being blown. Uh, and when God is ready to call his church to home, uh, there's going to be an angel with the sound of a trumpet. Uh, and that trumpet is going to sound. Uh, and the Bible says the dead uh, in Christ uh, are going to rise up first. Uh, then we which are alive uh, and remain uh, shall be caught up together. Uh, to meet him in the clouds uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord uh, and if you're not ready then uh, you're going to be left behind uh, if you're not ready to go uh, you're going to stay right here uh, but I got my mind made up God uh, whatever you got to do in me uh, let it be done uh, get all rid of all the sin oh God uh, clear Purge me with hyssop, oh God. Uh, clean out my heart. Uh, clean out my mind. Uh, clean out my house. Uh, clean out the idols. Uh, clean out the false gods. Uh, clean out the filth. Uh, get rid of all the leaven. Uh, that leaven of the whole lump. Uh, keep the feast with the sincerity and holiness. Uh, God, whatever you got to do. Uh, because I must make heaven. Oh. Got to have the oil. And while they went to go and get it right, help us from being last minute saints. Deliver us from last minute worship, last minute prayer, last minute repentance. Oh, I'm guilty of it too. Last minute trying to get an anointing rustled together. Okay, deliver us from the last minute because these virgins have tried to do it at the last minute. The bridegroom came. And he took everybody that was ready. Took everybody that was ready. Hallelujah, Jesus. Saints, my message tonight is that God is very close. Our Lord is very close. We can see the signs. So make sure you are ready. Make sure your heart is ready. Make sure there's no unforgiveness in there. 
Make sure there's no malice in there. Make sure there's no wrath in there. Let's get it ready. God is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is calling. That's why he's moving the hustle to repent and for us to be delivered and for us to be clean. He want to get us without spot or blemish. He don't want you to perish for some foolish sin that you're hiding. He wants you to be clean and ready for his coming. Oh, glory to God. He don't want you to perish for some unforgiveness of somebody that's not going to heaven themselves. He wants you to be clean. Hallelujah. He's ready to return. And so I urge you, church, I urge you today, let's get it ready. Amen. Jesus is coming. These altars are open. I'm closing here today. Let's make sure we're getting ourselves ready in Jesus' name. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you, Lord God, for the warning signs that you've made us aware, oh God, that you've caused us to know the time, Lord. And I pray, oh God, that we would take heed, Lord Jesus, that we would operate appropriately, Lord God, Lord Jesus, to get ourselves ready and to get as many people with us as possible, Lord. You see the time, Lord, you know what it is. I pray, Father, for everyone that's not saved. God, Lord, we don't have time for four or five years now. God, I pray that you save them now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we got a family that can't wait another four or five years of us. They got to be saved now, Jesus. Oh, God. This world, this community you put us in, Father, we don't have time, Jesus. Activate your angels now, oh, God. Activate them now, Jesus, oh, God. Activate it right now, Jesus. Oh, Lord, Jesus. And we'll submit, Lord God. We'll cleanse ourselves, Lord God. We'll sanctify ourselves to get ready for your coming, Lord. We'll wash our garments, Lord God, and make them white, Lord God. We'll cleanse our hearts, Lord God. We'll cleanse our minds, Lord God. We'll join in communion with our brothers and sisters, Lord God. And we'll do your work, Lord Jesus, oh God. Oh, Lord, oh God. I pray tonight, Lord, come quickly. Come quickly, Lord God. Avenge us of our adversary, oh God. Come quickly, Lord. Even now, Lord God, if you're ready, come, oh God, and deliver us, Lord. This world is not our home, Lord God. This world is full of wickedness, oh God. There's a new cry of Sodom going up before you, Lord God. There's a new cry of Gomorrah, Lord God. Aborted babies are crying up to you from the ground, oh God. Traffic children are crying and pleading to you, oh God. Mutilated adults, Lord God, are crying, oh God, with a state of hopelessness, oh God. Addicted people are crying, oh God. There is none good in this world, Lord God. The thoughts are trending to be evil continually, Lord God. We don't want this world, Lord God. We want your kingdom, oh God. This world, Lord, is corrupt, Lord. This world, oh God, is dark. This world, Lord God, is full of liars. Full of murderers, Lord God. Full of people that are exalting themselves, Lord God. People full of pride, Lord. People full of prejudice, oh God. People full of hate, Lord God. Demons are loose in this place, Lord God. Oh God, they've given themselves over to idols, Lord God. They've given